Hello and welcome to another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. The Christmas season is well on in earnest and match week 10 takes the spotlight. The lone televised picture on Sunday saw the high-riding Tipoli Gardens going for their fifth win of the campaign as they entertain struggling Malines United. Check out the highlights. Hello and welcome to the National Stadium East Field as we prepare for a Sunday afternoon of uh, football and we're looking forward as usual every weekend to the Ray Nevue Jamaica Premier League and we're looking at Tiridi Gardens uh, battling Malines United uh, this afternoon here at the Independence Park Complex. We're looking forward to, to this one. Tiridi Gardens in third spot. Well, let's take a look at that Tiridi Gardens lineup, shall we? Because Diego Horton starts for the first time between the sticks for Tivoli. They have a back three of Dean Pennycook and Barrington Price. Keno Simpson is also back there in the middle of the park. Anthony Thompson, Kevin Garnett, who wears the captain's armband. Howard Morris, who has three goals to his name so far, and Alton Lewis. Nikolai Fuller, Justin Dunn with nine goals, and Janiel Ray. They complete the starting line of Fort of the Gardens. What hasn't changed is their regular formation of 3-4-3, three, three, which Jerome Waite swears by. And it's great to see Howard Morris, their number seven, coming back into the starting line. I really think his chemistry with Justin Dunn excellent. And hopefully it will be a fruit for the Orange. Well, let's see how Malines United will mix as far as their chemistry is concerned. Peter Harrison is in goal. Johnny Flemings, Flemings will be asked to play left back, completing the back four. Jeremy Nelson, Dijon Grant and Enrique Gordon in the middle of the park. Uh, Javon Brown, Daniel Hardy, Steve O'Reed and Tyreek O'Connor. Jason Wright will play behind Thorne Simpson. 4-5-1 is what Malines will play. Quite a few changes. Of course, they finished their last game with nine players. Frankson getting a red card as well as Gooden. So none of them in the starting lineups. And that's why the defence line has been forced somewhat. Interesting to see Jeremy Nelson playing. Well, he has played almost every position except goalkeeper for Malines <laughs> over his tenure. Well, for Malines, you're right. Yeah, he for could, Malines. He, <laughs> I'm sure he was in the goal at some stage in his career, Jeremy <laughs> Nelson. Three goals to his name so far. Uh, such a vital cog in this Malines United wheel. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here between these two, Timothy Guns and Malines United, Thorne Simpson with an attempt that Horton was equal to the task with. And then just a slip there giving Timothy Guns a, a sniff there. Morris, and it came through to Fuller, and Harrison did well. Fuller trying to place it between the keeper's legs. Steve O'Reed out wide and uh, Bo played inside and Jason Wright couldn't quite connect properly with that one. Good work from the substitute Livingston to find Jason Wright. And then Livingston again in the second half sending a a ball inside and right should have buried that one. Wow. Big, big chance there. Hat trick against this team last season. Couldn't find the target here. And that was a wonderful finish. Pennycook did find the target for the first time in the Jamaica Premier League. His first ever goal in the league. And what a thumping finish that was. Oh, they loved it. He loved it. And the Tivoli Gardens with the advantage there. And then that came off the woodwork. Wonderful stuff. McBean, he had just come on as a substitute to Jay McBean. Almost made headlines. Lewis also had a really good game, you know. Slipping that one inside and that was a wonderful save by Peter Harrison. And uh, done with the effort on target and uh, Harrison in the way Tiffany Gans with 7 shots 4 on target Malens United with 14 shots 5 of which were on target they are, they are looking better and better at Malens United but they just uh, they are just missing out on picking up maximum points for their matches 3 corner kicks Tiffany Gans one more than Malens United who had the majority of the possession in fact in the end at 51% Diego, what a big performance for you. First match of the season, first minutes in two years. How does it feel? Well, it feels good to be back. 
and I'm healthy and strong now and looking for more better things ahead. It was this man's first game of the season, formalized. lines. Jeremy, not necessarily the result you're looking for, but a spirited performance, you would say? I mean, uh, in patches. I think I thought we played in patches. We created one and two opportunities. There are some opportunities I thought we should have converted. Um, but we gave away the ball in some crucial areas. Uh, it, it, when we're transitioning from defense to offense, you know, we kept on turning over. And I think that kind of set us back a bit. Just a second win in five for Jerome Wait, Jerome, a, a, a tough game for Tivoli, but it must be relieving to still come away with the three points at the end of it all. Well, well yes, it's a tough game. Uh, today, the Molines team really you know, put up a stunning fight. As you know, they're at the bottom of the table and they're hoping that they could have you know, dig deeper to get three points. In the end, you know, we were victorious. So Jerome Waite continues to dial up the right numbers for Tivoli Gardens, who continues to search up the JPL table. We take our first break here on JPL in 30. Stay with us as we bring you highlights from the first game of our Monday night doubleheader. Former champions Harborview are having a torrid time in the early part of the JPL season as they were yet to record a win. They welcomed the Lime Hall Academy FC in the first match of our Monday night doubleheader. Let's pick up the full match highlights. Hello and welcome to the National Stadium Eastfield as we prepare for another evening of football in the Ray Nevu Jamaica Premier League and we're looking forward to the first match on the agenda that's Harborview against Lime Hall. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Harborview, the home team. Romario Palma between the sticks. They do have a back four of the captain, Odlin Harding, Romain Brackenridge, Johnny Talbot and Trey Bennett slots in at the right back position. Kasim Priestley, Gavin Burton, Sean Anglin finds his way back in the starting lineup for the Stars of the East up front, David Reed, uh, Andre Fagan, who has a goal to his name, and uh, the other goal scorer in the starting line of Shaquille Bradford with five. Yeah, 4 3 3 is what they will play. Good to see David Reed, the youngster, getting an opportunity. He will be playing wide to give some width. Andre Fagan and Shaquille Bradford. I'd love to see them play closer together, Donald. I think there will be a better partnership rather than having one wide and Bradford working alone, but he's in some good form, and this defense line will have to look out for that. Yep, Jaheem Williams is right behind that defence line, uh, which includes the captain, the former cricketer, Damani Sewell. Rowan Sewell right beside him, Sir Jay Anderson and Shaquille Kane complete the back four. Uh, Darius Stewart, Javon Ellis, Marlon Buckley in the middle of the park. Buckley is getting his first start with Lime Hall. Ronaldo Hansen will play behind Carlos Campbell and Ronaldo Brown. Let's take a look at the full-time highlights. And it was precision, pretty on. Priestley to Reed. Not a lot of good defending you can spot there. But Priestley did well to pick out his marker. And Reed, not necessarily known for his heading, got his first goal in the Jamaica Premier League via the route. Stewart firing that one straight. To Romario Palma who didn't do a whole lot in this game and then the mistake and uh, Bradford converting getting getting his sixth goal of the campaign Shaquille Bradford and uh, not the best back pass at all and uh, putting his custodian in a whole lot of trouble and Bradford getting his goal and then some good work by Anglin moving nicely inside the box we've seen that on a couple of occasions today almost added a third there but this is when the third goal would come that was a wonderful first touch you know to to kill it right at his foot had to stretch for it a, a bit and then bang the left footed drive into the goal second of the evening for David Reed. His teammates loved it. There could have been more. 
Priestley again. And Williams with the hand on it onto the crossbar. And then Talbot. What it it wasn't supposed to have been a clearance. And here is Reed again. Playing that one inside. And Anklin was running onto the end of that one. Could have been more. Bradford through on goal. You'd bet your house on him. Williams again with the outstretched leg. And here is Bradford again. This time giving Fagan a little bit of action. Look at the save. That's magnificent. You know, full stretch to his left. Jaheim Williams with a strong hand. And putting that on around the post. And then the opportunity for Bradford again. Headed it down and onto the bar. Innovative, but not quite successful. Yeah. It was too easy for Harbourview. Let's take a look at the statistics here. Harbourview had 18 shots. Half of them were on target. Lime Hall pretty much four from four. 11 fouls committed by each team. And uh, Harbourview had more corner kicks, seven to five. And Harbourview with the majority of the possession as well at 55%. David, your first two goals of the season. Uh, first two goals in the Jamaica Premier League. How does that feel? I mean, it feels wonderful. It's good that I can contribute towards our first win of the season. We'll definitely be on this. Vani, talk to me about this performance. Uh, probably not your favourite of the three. No, absolutely not. I thought that we... We got out of the blocks really, really slow. Um, we didn't get going at all in that first half, and it didn't help that you can see that after two minutes, and then, you know, quickly thereafter, you're down 2 nil. you're always going to be behind the eight ball. And so, thought that we didn't handle ourselves well in the first half. Second half was about um, limiting the damage and, um, you know, trying to get some positives from it. Other than the second half, the intensity was a lot better. Uh, substitutions really helped. and. Um, you know, we, we really managed that period a lot better than we did. But of course, you know, you are already down three 0 so it's it it doesn't help. It doesn't do much. But um, you know, we'll take the positives. An improved performance is exactly what Lord Bernard got today from his Harbourview charges. And well, congrats on your first win of the season. <laughs> oh, ironic. Yes, we we are grateful for the win today, definitely. The first half. Excellent. You took your foot off the gas in the second half. Why? No, I wouldn't say we took your foot off. We knew the game was going to be characterized by the, the, the weather elements. The breeze probably played a factor. But the longer the game went, then you could say we took your foot off, we got a bit complacent, you know? And um, probably ruined the fact that we would have allowed Limal one and two look in. And the fact that on the other end of the pitch, we weren't clinical enough and good with our decision making. So Harborview pick up their first win to get their campaign off and running as they look to propel up the JPL table. We take another break here on JPL in 30, more football action right after this. Welcome back to JPL in 30. We pick up our second Monday night football picture as Waterhouse entertained St. Best side Treasure Beach FC. Donald Oliver takes us through the full match highlights. It's Monday night football. We're getting ready for another game in the Rain Nevue Jamaica Premier League. And Waterhouse tonight, the former champions, will be playing host to one of the new boys, Treasure Beach, at the National Stadium East Complex. And uh, we are looking forward to, to this one. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Waterhouse tonight. John Wilson between the sticks, Shamar Booth, Damian Bins, Elvis Wilson and Kenley Deacon, the back four in the middle of the park. Uh, we have Andre Smith, Nikoi Christian and Denard Thomas. And up top, Shamari Dallas, uh, Andre Fletcher with a couple of goals to his name and Javain Bryan, who has uh, six goals to his name.
4-3-3 formation for Waterhouse tonight. Let's see what Treasure Beach they have to offer. Carlisle Holmes makes his first start this season. And they have a back four of Nicardo Smith, Jordan Nemard, Romario Thompson and Ryan Dwyer. In the middle of the park, Jay Jameson, Romario Smith and Corton Wright. And up front, Lorenz Lewin, Jamara Hall and Shanoi Smith. Yeah, Moe Morgan, usually the starter for Treasure Beach. But uh, Holmes is now between the, the sticks for the team from St. Elizabeth. And we are moments away from the kickoff here. Here we go at the National City of East Field. Waterhouse kicking towards the Caribbean Sea, and the Treasure Beach will be going towards the crossroads area. Treasure Beach in their white tops and yellow shorts and green stockings. Just knocking that one into touch as they try to brush the cobwebs off. But immediately the play is stopped and it looks as if Leonardo Thomas requires a little attention. Doesn't need attention from off the bench though. Yeah, but Marcel Gale mentioning that Waterhouse, they keep on ringing the changes match week to match week and possibly explaining their inconsistency so far this season. Damien Bins at the back with the number seven. And, uh, Samari Dallas with a, a knock in his back there over on the far side. Waterhouse. Let's take a look at the full time highlights here. And uh, this is how it all began. And it was a beautiful finish by Fletcher, who started. It off with pouncing on the mistake and then got the return ball from Nikoi Christian and Waterhouse were in front. Treasure Beach were pretty loose at the back and Javain Bryan converted. Wonderful, powerful finish from the big striker getting his seventh goal this season. Dear number nine, stating for a fact, it had to be him. And then this effort from Lewin was uh, blocked just in front of goal. Boots his ball inside, looking for Donata Thomas. It was perfectly placed. The pass, not the finish. Lovely stuff by Treasure Beach as they tried to respond again. Lawrence and Lewin out wide. And the dink. Wonderfully done. Beautifully placed. Wilson couldn't do a lot with it. And he was up. And there were chances. 
And he had to be taken out. Thomas, second yellow card shown to the captain. And then here, wonderful work from Mitchell to keep the ball. And then the ball inside to, Christ to Christian was uh, perfect for him to set on a platter for Andre Fletcher to get his second of the night. That was just wonderful to watch. Waterhouse coming there. And they knew that they, they've gotten their act together for this game. And look at this chance of Wilson off the post. Swore that he scored there. Elvis Wilson looking for his first goal. And that was also oh close. But they would get one more. Ron D. Smith finding the corner. Opening his account this season. Good finish. That's all she wrote for this one. Woodhouse comfortable winners. Eighteen shots for Waterhouse, six on target. Treasure Beach with six shots, three on target, and six fouls committed by Waterhouse, eight by Treasure Beach, and the corner kicks in favor of Waterhouse, five to three. Also in favor of Waterhouse, the possession at sixty-two percent. Andre, for many times last season, for, for, for the early part of this season, frustrating times for you, but now, back in goal scoring form, how good does that feel? Well, it's a great feeling for me. I've been putting a whole lot of work, so it's just execute time for me. I would say for 75 minutes of the game, you were, you were right there perf um, performing well, Lewin getting, back in, getting you back into the game with a goal, but yet falling a man short and then conceding two goals late, not necessarily the, the final moments you would have wanted to script. Yes, I would say, um, unfortunately, with the red card. But we, we, we stood up thoroughly to, to carry out it, um, to carry out a win. We wanted a win. We, we, we were fighting to get back in the, in, the, in the last minute. And then we came out in the second half, continuing the same pattern. But we, we lost out in the last couple of minutes, which is a red card. And then afterwards, you now we... Still fight, but it wasn't there for us. I think it's just a bad luck day for us, so we just move on to the next game coming up on Thursday. Damian Gordon and company taking it from them. Damian, you must be impressed by how you finished this game, um, especially as when things got tight. Um, definitely. I think it shows a little bit of a strong mentality. I think we were very good in terms of taking our chances when they came to us, and it was very good for us tonight. Taking chances is something that you hadn't been doing over the last few games. You've gone so long without scoring. Well, you certainly filled your boots tonight and a lot more clinical than we have seen Waterhouse over the last few games. Absolutely. I would agree with you 100% where that is concerned. Um, good goals from Fletcher tonight as well. Uh, I think Nikai Christian played a vital part. But overall, it was a very good, very good team performance. Yeah, so this was a match week with quite a few goals in it. Let's recap, shall we? The champions went down by two goals to nil to Veer United Arnett Guns with a 2 0 win over Humble Lion. Port Mayor United edging out Cavalier 1 0. Dun Beholden beating uh, Montego Bay United by two goals to one. Tiffany with a 1 0 win over Malines United. Harbourview blanking Lime Hall by three goals to nil. And Waterhouse with a 4 1 win over Treasure Beach. So let's now take a look at the latest point standings. Uh, Mount Pleasant on 19 points. They still lead, but they've dropped quite a few points in their last three matches and uh, Arnett Gardens in second spot on 18 Tivoli uh, in third on 17 Waterhouse Portman United and Veer United competing the top six Treasure Beach just above the relegation zone Harbourview uh, just above them in 11th spot on seven points and uh, yeah Limehall Malines United in the drop zone at the moment that's how we put a wrap on another JPL in 30 edition on your home of champions on Sportsmax. We take a break for the holiday season and come back in January with more pulsating JPL action.